Hey everyone, welcome to the Coastal Podcast. I'm Pastor Lucas Granger and want to say thank you for listening in. May this podcast bring some light to your world today. Enjoy grace and peace. Amen. Good morning. Hey, I want to take a few minutes this morning to just give some shout outs to a few things that are going on. Uh, if you remember just a few months ago, uh, all of you brought in all kinds of stuff. You brought in uh, jewelry and purses and all kinds of things to, to donate to get auctioned off for Birthday Wishes Ministry. And if y'all don't know what Birthday Wishes is, it's where uh, a, a group has started uh, all these kids in our public school system that would otherwise not get anything for their birthday. They go in uh, to the public school and they're able to get gifts for all of these kids. Um, and y'all brought all kinds of stuff, all kinds of things. Uh, Jill said that her her garage looked like a flea market up in there. I mean, just, but they had uh, their auction. 176 ladies came out, bought all that stuff up, and raised $4,500. Come on. That will be enough for 300 kids. 300 kids in Brunswick County are going to get some gifts uh, for their birthdays this year in the public schools. Also, uh, this February, we did the Polar Plunge. Uh, some of y'all remember that. The youth group went out. Uh, Ocean Isle Beach jumped in the ocean, and we were raising some funds for the youth trip this summer. And uh, just, just to let you know, like fully funded, all of the youth are going uh, the parents didn't have to pay anything but a deposit. Amazing. Uh, our men's group, one of our men's groups, uh, the guys got together. There's a gentleman in the community. Uh, we heard that he was just having some struggles. Uh, some things were going on in his house. The, the, the men's group got together, and they went and they fixed up all the underpinning of his house, helped him out, uh, everything completely paid for, took, taken care of. Um, just awesome. Just awesome. Uh, to see what God's doing. Uh, another thing, this year, this year will be the year that we hit uh, half a million dollars in giving to outreach into the community. Half a million dollars. Let me, let me kind of put that into another perspective too. The first five years of the church, we didn't have half a million dollars come in the entire first five years. And now we're saying that, and I'm just believing God's going to, man, just do even more with that. Um, so our church, just so you know, you know, you tithe, but our church tithes as well. We're giving into the community. We give, uh, we're part of the Association of Related Churches. And this year, through our giving to that, uh, or last year, I'm sorry, 66 churches were launched and 11 of them international. Come on. Um, just to know that you're part of something bigger right? We're part of the body of Christ and, and what we're doing. And another thing just to be praying for is some of us local pastors, two things that have been huge on my heart for the last few years is just, uh, God, how can we become a house of prayer? And Lord, how can we answer your prayer that says, Lord, let them be one just as you and I are one? What does it mean for your church to really be unified? And so some of us pastors uh, in the community have been coming together and, and talking about what would it look like to have our own local network of pastors and churches that we could share resources together and, and things that are going on and invite uh, each other to. And, and, and I'm just, we're just at the beginning stages, but I'm so encouraged just to see that the conversation's taking place. Come on. To be a part of what God's doing. All right. Here we go. Y'all ready? Luke chapter 24. I'm going to read verses 28 through 22, and it says this. And while he was reclining at the table, speaking of Jesus, he was speaking to them, he took the bread, spoke a blessing, and he broke it, and he gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they recognized Jesus. And then he disappeared. And they said to each other, didn't our hearts not burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? Man, and, and I don't know about you, but that's just my prayer, just to get around some people that you can walk, take a little walk with, take a stroll on the beach, walk down uh, in your neighborhood, whatever it may be, and they just stir a fire within you. You know those people in your life? You need, if you ain't got one, you need to find one. You need to find somebody. What you doing? Let's just go take a walk. And all of a sudden, you start talking about Jesus, and something gets in you of like, I just can't go home, and then something's got to change. 
Am I alone on that? Come on, church. Let me teach y'all. When the pastor says something, y'all say amen. Amen. There it goes. There it goes. I'm going to teach y'all. I know some of y'all a little Catholic background. You're supposed to stay silent. You don't say, no, 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 not here. You're going to talk to me. Help a brother out this morning. All right. There we go. I promise I will do better if you talk to me. To have eyes to see. Jesus asked, man, this prayer, eyes to see, uh, ears to hear. The thing is, we can become blinded to what's right in front of us. They're right there talking to Jesus, and they don't know it's him. And here we have this illustration where a space is created for opened eyes, where all of a sudden they recognize, oh, no, no, there's something more to this. In the scriptures, we see this over and over, and, and one guy puts it like this. Ooh, surely God was in this place, and I didn't even know it. Ooh, I was just going along like normal, but now I recognize that this whole time he was here, and now I'm awakened to something. Oh, this is something special. Maybe nobody else sees it, but I see it. It's something, there's this moment that God's having, and it's, and it's familiar, and it's new all at the same time as he sits at this table, and he blesses and breaks this bread now, when I say to you this word blessed, what do you think of? What's, what comes into your mind as, a, as you think of the word blessed? When we say this word, it's a word that's now not just a Christian word, but it's used in every area of society and culture, and it doesn't matter if you're a Christian or not. You could go around, and I'm, just, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You could be an atheist, and I'm blessed, and I'm blessed. You could, you could receive the reward. You know, it's the, it's the music awards. It's the movie awards, and, and the first, oh, I'm, I just feel so blessed. I just want to thank God, and just, we're just so blessed to have this, and I'm watching. I'm thinking, I don't know if you are, because like that album was horrible, like, I know everybody's telling you it's the number one album, but it was, I don't think God was in that. And, and you're just saying, oh, I'm, I'm so blessed. It was horrible. And I think sometimes what we're saying is I won. I, I'm blessed because I, I won, or I'm blessed because I'm in good health, or I'm blessed because the bank account is full, or I'm blessed because I got a promotion on the job today. What we're saying is I'm blessed because it's worked out for my benefit or it's worked out for my will. It's my benefit or my will that be done, and so therefore I, now I feel blessed. Come on. And now we don't, you know, we don't say that out loud. We just kind of live it, right? We just kind of live with this idea of blessed. And last week we talked about our, our chosenness, to be, be chosen, to be taken, and often how we look through the lens of competition. And my... Uh, premise for today is oftentimes when we look at the word blessed, we want to look at it through this lens of it's just more and more stuff or it's my will. And this is how the word has been come to define in our culture. And sometimes even pe people would say this prosperity gospel. And the prosperity gospel boils down to this idea that now God exists for my benefit. God exists for my good and all of this. And God is this kind of genie in a bottle that whenever I have a wish or a need, then I'll go to him. Now, we've heard that illustration before, but I think it's actually changed where God's not so much the genie in the bottle anymore as God is more like the fire extinguisher on the, on the wall behind the plate of glass that says, only break in case of emergency. Come on. I'm only going to go, only if, when I need you, God, but you just be right there on the wall. And if there's an emergency, otherwise, I got this. Come on. Otherwise, like, I, I could take care of this. And then I'll go to you. I love you. I need you when I need you, but I don't, you know, only in case of emergency. And, and, and again, we don't say it. Sometimes we just live like it. God, I, I'm good. I really don't want you to be involved with my life because I got all this taken care of until it's something I can't take care of. So what does it mean? What does it mean to be blessed? Let me give you a few different things. If you open your Bibles to the book of Genesis, chapter one, page one. If you're looking for it. I'm looking for it. Page one is page 57. Here we go. And it says this, in the evening and morning passed and it came to mark the fourth day, beginning verse 20. I think God said this, let the waters swarm with fish and other life and let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. And so God created this great sea creature and every living thing that scurried and swarmed in the water and, and every sort of bird, each producing offspring off of its same kind. And God said this, he saw that it was good 
And he did this the very first time this word is used in the scriptures. God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply. So there's this word, be fruitful and multiply, that he speaks. It says, let the fish fill the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. So the very first blessing has actually nothing to do with humans. We have fish and birds that are getting blessed. So let's continue. He goes on, evening and morning, there's this rhythm to creation. Uh, And so God created human beings in his own image, in his own likeness, God created them. Male and female, he created them. And in verse 28, it says this, and that God blessed them, and he said this. So there's this blessing, and there's words that are spoken just like he did to the fish and the birds. And he said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish and the sea and the birds and the sky and all the animals that scurry along the ground. One more time. So we have these fish, we have these birds, now we have humanity, male and female, with this blessing. And then it says this in chapter 2. So we created the heavens and the earth, and everything in them was completed. And on the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation, so he rested from all of his work. And then God does this. God blessed it. He blessed the seventh day, and he declared it what? He declared it holy, because it was the day when he rested from all of his work and all of his creation. So here you have this process of of fish and birds and man, and then a day being blessed. And so if we look at our definition of like, blessed is just this accumulation of stuff or my will be done, here's the problem with that, because it only works for us. It doesn't work for the fish. It doesn't work for the birds. It doesn't work for the day. It just works for us. Isn't that the way we like to think of it? It's all about me. See, the, 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 the fish don't hang around. They, they don't have this like, oh, we just got to accumulate more stuff. Like, oh, I don't know. I'm thinking about getting a new car. I don't know. I'm just hanging out. The, the birds aren't flying in the air. Hey, I, you know, where are you going to be in five years? Like, they don't have this big dreams and hopes and vision and plan. They have no will to impress upon humanity of, like, oh, we're going to do this, and oh, I'm going to be the big bird of all of this thing. And they're not like, there's none of that. And, and then it's the same thing with the day. The day doesn't collect a bunch of stuff or impose its will. I mean, could you imagine for a moment the sun just being like, I'm so bored. I'm just here all day long, and it's so hot. Literally, I just burn all day, every day. No one thanks me. Gosh, this is my job. I just, it's just constant, steady. <sighs> sure, we should be winner. Like, no. There's no accumulation of stuff. There's no, no, this will. Like, it's only listened to what God has told it to do. On a side note, you do realize we are the only thing in all of creation that can tell God no. Everything else obeys his voice. Read, read the end of the book of, the jo- of Job. You will see real quick all of creation. No, no, no. Ocean here and no further. Sun right here. We have a, a store up of, of clouds and rain. And so I stored this up for a certain day. I mean, all of creation obeying God, except for us to be like, mm, no, God, I don't think I want to do that. And, and all of this happens. Now let's go to the book of Revelation. Last book, maybe the last page. Revelations chapter 22. And it says this, beginning in verse 3. Now, no longer will there be a curse upon anything. So something's happened. Something's happened between Genesis 20, uh, 21, Revelation 22. All of a sudden, there's this curse. There will be this curse upon anything. For the throne of God and of the Lamb will be there, and his servants will worship him. And they will see his face. And his name will be written on their foreheads, and there will be no night. There will be no need for lamps or the sun. The sun's job will be done. For the Lord God will shine on them, and they will, they will do this. They'll reign forever and ever. And the angel said to me, everything you have heard and seen is trustworthy and true. The Lord God will inspire his prophets And he has sent his angel to tell his servants what will happen soon. And here are the words in red. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed are those who obey the words of the prophecy that are written in this book. 
And I would submit to you, it's not just talking about the book of Revelation. This book, blessed are you when you obey what's written. And it goes on, and it says this in verse 14. Again, this word, blessed are those who have who's washed their robes. They will be permitted to enter through the gates of the city and eat the fruit of the tree of life. Now, most scholars agree that when they say this, when they're talking about washing their robes, not literally talking about washing their robes, they're talking about obeying his commandments. So blessed are you. Here, here we have it, Genesis 1. Here we have it in Revelations 22, this word again, this blessing. We'll get to that. Genesis 1 is this Hebrew poem, there's this creation, there's this rhythm to it. There's evening and morning and evening and morning and creation. And, and, and if we look at it, uh, you'll see that all of a sudden there's a separation of things and then there's a filling of things. He, he, he separates the, uh, the dark and the night and the heavens and the earth and he separates and he, he separates the land and, and the waters. And then the next thing God does is he fills that which he separates. He fills the sky with the birds and puts the sun up there and he puts the, the fish in the water. And so he separates and then he fills. This is very important and then he blesses. See, there's a rhythm to it. See, we want God to bless us, but we don't want to be separate. We want the filling, we want all of the things, God, we want you to bless us, but no, no, we don't want to be separate from nothing. We want our light and our dark to blend together. In other words, this, we want God to bless our mess. God, I want you just to bless all of these things that I'm doing, and I want to mix my light and my darkness, and I think, I think we should put fish in the air, and I think we should put birds in the water, because that's the way I want to do it. That's the way I feel today. And we want God, if you could just bless that, just bless my mess, and I'm telling you, God doesn't work that way. There's a rhythm, there's a separation, there's a, there's a separation even to the day in which he says, like, no, this day is holy, it's separate, and, and then he fills it with a rest. And see, we, we, we want God to just, to just bless the thing that we want him to do, and God just bless our mess. I, I, I want to go home, and I'm gonna, Saturday, I'm going to binge watch 20 hours of Netflix, I'm going to just binge watch The Walking Dead all day Saturday, and I'm going to come to church on Sunday and wonder why I feel like The Walking Dead. <laughs> and wonder, I don't know, I just didn't feel God's presence today. Come on, somebody. I, got, I want God to just bless my sexual preferences because this is how I feel and this is what I want to do. And this is, no, 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 it ain't got what God said. We, we want to just bless our mess and God to do all of these things. And we have a hard time. And, and just, just pastor, I, you know, oh, I don't know, I need you to pray for me. I, need pray. I gotta go to the doctor. Why you gotta go to the doctor? I don't know, something with my lungs. Because you've been smoking for the last 40 years. Amen. Come on, I know I'm stepping on toes. Like, oh, well, pastor, you'll say, you know, because I got cancer in my lungs. Are you it says it on the carton, y'all. <laughs> if you smoke this, it will kill you, right? And but we want God to bless us. Oh, we don't just bless. I just need, need him to heal me. Stop smoking. Stop, stop eating cheeseburgers every day. And your arteries will start working again. Uh, I know I'm, you know, it's okay. Talk about the other stuff, Pastor. <laughs> talk about the, you know, let's not talk about food. Because, mm, come on, all of us. We want God to bless our mess. God's like, I ain't going to do it. You've got to separate you got to separate so I could fill. And here's his nature, this word in which he spoke. And he said, the very nature of this thing is increase. Because if I bless it, there's an increase that comes with There's a certain fertility. There's a certain multiplication that happens when I bless it. And so if I, if I bless what you haven't separated from, it'll only bless your mess, and you'll just have a bigger mess. Well, I just, Pastor, I just want you to pray over my business. I want you to pray that my business does well. Do you Sabbath? Do you know how to take a day and just rest? And you still want God to, you're not following in with the rhythms of creation. And if God blesses you right now, you'll just have a bigger mess. You'll be more stressed out. You'll be more like, oh, oh God, no. You've got to fall in. You've got to separate it. You've got to say, no, 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 this is holy. Following, there's a separation. There's a feeling that has to take place. Otherwise, it's just an amplified mess. 
and welcome to America sometimes. We've got to be obedient to his word. Blessed are those who will receive all of this because they've been obedient and obeyed these words that I've written everything in this word. There's this obedience, there's this faithfulness that comes along with it. See, you know, God gave Adam to start with a garden, like one garden, just work this garden. Oh, we want thousands of gardens, but can you work this one garden? But pastor, I want, I want them to do all this. I want God to do this. I want God to do, but are you faithful with the little? Because if you're not faithful with the little, you will not be faithful with the much. But, but if I win the lottery, if you win the lottery, you'll be an amplified mess. Because money only amplifies what's already in you. If you're generous, it will make you more generous. If you're greedy, it will make you more greedy. If you have no financial sense, it'll make you an idiot. <laughs> and we've seen it. History says that with people that win the lottery, that have no clue what they're doing. And they're broke in a couple years. All of a sudden, like, God would just bless my mess. And if you're not faithful with the little, you will not be faithful with the much. Amen. Let me give you a little insight. It's all little. It's all little, and it's all much. It's all little, because your biggest problem in life is not a problem for Jesus. Your biggest thing that you're stressing about, and you don't understand how it's going to work out, it's not a problem for Jesus. He's got it. It's, and at the same time, every single thing matters. He knows every hair on your head. Every little thing, it's all, no, 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 I'm, I'm working on that too. It's all little, it's all big. You can be, here's where it gets interesting. You can be separated, you can be obedient, you can be called, you can be chosen, you can be set apart, and still not experience this blessing that we read about in Genesis chapter one. You, you still not be experiencing the, the increase, the fertility, the multiplication and if we open the Bible, we see this time and time again of all of these things happening. Man, you get saved and things get rough. Things get real rough. It says you're the head and not the tail. It sure does feel like I'm the tail sometimes. It sure does feel that way. Like, oh, Abraham, you're going to have all these kids. House is still empty. Diapers are waiting. Nothing's happening. I, 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 know, I know you're saying that. Barren wife. Bank account, overdraft, again. All of these things happen. But, but, but I'm blessed, I'm blessed. It sure doesn't feel it sometimes. And so what happens as a culture and society, and this is nothing new, this has happened since a long, long time ago, is we come to the conclusion, if I'm not experiencing it, the opposite must tr be true. So if I'm not in experiencing this increase, this multiplication, if I'm experiencing a, a decrease or infertility or subtraction, something must be wrong. To put it another way, the, the overarching thought for lots of years was if you were a woman and you couldn't get pregnant, then you must be cursed. God doesn't love you because you're barren. You can't be fruitful. You can't multiply. And, and yet we have God saying this huge promise and this obvious blessing to him, and nothing happens. Every, oh, I'm sorry for you, Abraham. And he was obedient. And he listened, and he separated himself, and God did all of these things, and still it was like, whoa, 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 for year after year after year. And what the world says is, well, this is what you have to do. You have to sacrifice more. You have to cut yourself upon the altar, and you have to prove to God that, 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 that he could trust you or that you're worthy. And it, be, it turns into this whole thing of what we would call Greek mythology, of like, ah, oh, the gods are angry with you. And so you have to do extreme things to please the gods. And we would never say this with Christianity, be, ah, but we just live it. We just say, oh, maybe if I do this, this, and this, then God will be pleased with me. And, and then, then I could earn God's favor. And then there will be increase in multiplication in all of these things. Hold that thought. Because here's what's interesting. We have Genesis chapter 1. We have Revelation 22, this word blessing. And then you have Jesus that comes on the scene. And his very first sermon, he's been waiting 30 years for this sermon. 
I'm telling you, like, if you're, if you're getting ready to preach not just a sermon, but the sermon, the sermon you've been storing up for a long time, you, you, you're ready. Like, ooh, he, Jesus is ready. I guarantee he's ready. He's thought this thing through. And what's interesting is the very first word of Jesus' very first huge public sermon is this, blessed. Blessed. And then he proceeds to totally blow everyone's mind on giving us a brand new definition of what it means to be blessed. When he says blessed, he starts using words like blessed are the poor, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the humble, blessed are those who are hungry and thirst and are merciful and meek, and blessed are those who bring peace, and blessed are those who are persecuted and mocked and lied about, and blessed when they say all manners of evil against you. And they're like, no, Jesus. No, 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 because if you read Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, no, like, it's, it's increase, it's fertility, it's, it's multiplication, it's filling the earth, and, like, and you're saying like, no, 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 poor means you're lacking stuff, and, all, and mourning means you've lost something, and Jesus is like blowing their minds, and you're listening in, and I can just imagine the crowd leaning in. And there, there's kind of two groups of people there, and, and if you're there, and you're listening to this, and you're rich, you're leaning in too. And the reason why you're leaning in is because, man, you have all the stuff. And your will has been done, but you still lie down and you cry yourself to sleep at night because something's missing. Because I've done all of these things, what, Lord, do I still lack? But if you're there and you're poor, like uh, my whole life, everyone has told us, like, there's the rich and the poor, and like, we, we will find happiness, we will find joy if we just get these things. And, and so now you're telling me I could not have those things and still be blessed? And they're leaning in, they're listening to Jesus, and he's blowing their minds. And then he takes it a step further with verse 12. It says this, and you can be happy about it. You can be happy about it when people, when people uh, mock you and lie about you and say all these uh, things against you. Great is your reward in heaven. Prophets were persecuted the same way. And, and there's three, three different things that he's just well, completely different from society and culture. One is you can be happy about it. No, nobody's feeling happy about their loss. Two, great is your reward in heaven. In other words, like, you, you think that it was forgotten. No, no, no. There is a reward that will come. You just don't see it right now. There is a reward. And, and, and then three is this. You ain't alone. There's many that have gone before you that are experienced what you're experiencing too. Don't think it's just you. Fruit, multiplication, increase, fertility, all of this thinking. And then Jesus says, some of these things... Some of the multiplication, some of the fruit, you're not going to experience in this life. Some fruit is so valuable, it's stored up in heaven. Amen. There's some things in your life, there's some, there's some babies that you're longing to give birth to that God said, no, no, it's so valuable, it's for another world, it's for heaven, and you're not going to see it right now. There is a reward. It's a great reward. You might not see the outworking of it right now, but you will, church, because he sees everything. I want to read from you, read to you from the book of Hebrews chapter 11, where it talks about those. We sang about it this morning, these heroes of the faith, and it says this in Hebrews chapter 11. And he just, he just finished giving this list of all these amazing men and women that did these incredible things and, and became incredibly strong. And starting in verse 35, it says, women, even the loved ones, were received back from the dead. But, but others were tortured. They refused to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered at and, and their backs were cut and opened with whips. Others were chained and imprisoned. Some died by stoning. Some were sawed in half and others were killed with the sword. Some went about, went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. Listen to what it says about these people. They were too good for this world. They were too good for this world. Wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. All of these people earned a good reputation because of their faith, and yet none of them received all that God had promised them. For God had something better in mind for us, so that they would not reach perfection without us. 
In other words, there's some rewards in heaven for every one of these men and women that died for their faith and didn't see it. God saw it. And I'm here to tell you, it's the same thing for each one of us. There are certain promises that they're so special and they're so good that God's like, no, no, it's for a whole nother thing. It's for heaven. Just hold on. And I don't know about you, but I want to fill my heavenly bank account. I don't want to get to heaven and be broke. I want, I want to heaven like, oh man, all these things I thought that just got passed over. Nobody saw and no one knew, God, you saw. And now all of a sudden, oh man, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the, this new definition of being blessed. I love what Paul says. Let me read to you what he says in, in uh, Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. He says this. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content in whatever I have. This is, this is important. In whatever I have. I know how to live with almost nothing or with everything. I've learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it's with a full stomach or with an empty stomach, or with plenty or with little. I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Do you see what he's saying there? It's a trial in every situation. It's a trial not just when you're broke. It's a trial when you're full. It's a trial not just when your belly is empty. It's a trial when your belly's full. All of these things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm not going to give up on him when it gets hard, and I'm not going to give up on him when times get good. See, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm not going to pull him off the wall and in just in case of emergency. I need him every day. I need him in the midst of my blessing. I need that wisdom to tend for and guard this garden that he's given me. All of it and everything. Hallelujah. Not my suffering, not, 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 not the stuff, nor my will, but his be done. This is, this is who I am in Christ. Now, this is where, again, it gets really interesting because God says something to man in Genesis that he doesn't say to the birds, to the fish, to the day. He says this, rule over it. Rule over it. All that I've given you, you rule, rule over it, whether it's little, little or whether it's much. Don't let it rule over you. Amen. See, if you let it rule over you, you're going to break the rhythm of creation, See, and Jesus even addresses this one time when they're talking about the Sabbath. Do you not realize that the Sabbath, I mean, it was made for man. Like, I, I made this so man, like, you rule over that day. Don't let it rule over you. It's not a list of rules and regulations on this side. No, 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 it's made for you. It's a gift. You rule over your days. You rule over your fish and your birds and your garden, everything that I've given you. Some of us are being run over by the thing we've been called to govern. And God said, you got to get this right. You got to get this right. You're supposed to govern these things. My finances do not determine my happiness. My state of being and my state of health do not determine my happiness. I remember what it's like to lie on that hospital bed thinking I was going to die. I didn't feel very blessed at that moment. But I also knew, God, I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me, so I just need you to come into this moment. I know what it's like. I've literally lived years of my life without a penny to my name. I've lived over in Indonesia without a penny to my name, and I've watched God provide for me time and time again. I, I literally had two T-shirts for a long time, I'd wear one t-shirt, it'd start getting nasty, I'd flip it inside out, I'd wear it again. It got too nasty, then I'd wash it and I'd wear the other t-shirt while that one, and, and if you go to my house now, I've got a closet full of t-shirts. I've learned how to do all things in, in t-shirts, not all things in all things. I can't say Paul's statement yet, I'm still a work in progress, y'all. But I've learned that whether I have one t-shirt or 50 t-shirts, God, I could do all things. Through you, who's trying to, it's you're, you're the one. And I'm going to be faithful with this process. It's, it's hard, though, y'all. It's hard to see the blessing when you're in pain. It's easy for me to preach this, guys. It, it's hard to live it. It's hard to see the blessing when you're in pain. It's hard to look up and count all the stars in the sky and then go home to a barren wife. It's hard. 
It's hard to eat rice and beans every night and be like, no, we're the head and not the tail. It's hard. But I also think it was hard for Paul to be beaten and left for dead. I think it was hard for Paul to be whipped beyond measure and his back bleeding and then get up the next day and write the New Testament. I think it was hard for Job as he sat beside that campfire and had lost everything. He's sitting there scraping himself with a piece of broken pottery, maybe the same piece of pottery that he used to eat a wonderful meal out of, with all of his friends in his ears telling him, you must have done something wrong. This is what it is to be blessed. This is what it is to follow God. Look at what you've gotten, Job, for all of your good work. Look at where God has left you. Why don't you just curse God and die? And if the enemy's not saying that to you, the enemy has another voice in your ear that's saying, no, 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 but if you'll just do this, I'll turn this rock into bread and you'll be full. Look at all these nations. I'll give you everything. I'll give you all of this stuff if you'll just worship me. And there's this temptation in all of this life, and it's, it's one thing for me to preach. It's another thing for all of us to live it. And in this very moment, we've got to realize whether it's Times the good times. It's in this moment that the Lord is doing something in us that we may rule over it and it would not rule over us. My circumstances will not dictate my promise. Some of y'all need to write that on your mirror. You just wake up. My circumstances will not dictate my promise, nor will they shed light on who I believe he is. I just know who he is through this word. Now, what's interesting is in Matthew 5, Jesus blows everybody's mind with this blessing. And then, tell the, and then for a good portion of the rest of Jesus' sermon, it's him telling us how to govern over it. It's him telling us, no, no, you've heard by them of old. This is how you, now I'm going to say something else to you. This is how you govern all of these things. This is how you govern the blessing. And then he says this. He says, you're the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. And what good is it if salt loses its salt and it's just be trampled on under by foot? We don't take this light. We don't hide it under things. No, no, we light up the world. Jesus is saying, listen, you're called to be different. You're called to be salt. You're called to be light. You're called to be separated. You're called to bring out the flavors of this earth. But if you lose that, if you, if you begin to blend your darkness and your light and you want God to bless your mess, uh, what good is the salt anymore? We just throw it on the ground and trample it underfoot. What good is this darkness if we hide it? What if we extinguish the light? I mean, the world is longing to see the light of Jesus. And you know how Jesus wants to do it? Through you and through me. Why do we keep hiding it? Stop hiding it. Well, I'm afraid I might offend somebody. You will. Jesus said you will. I mean, this life is temporary. This life is short. We've got to let our lives be salt and light. And this is, what, I mean, this is what God has purposed in you. And the world is looking, how will you react when everything is good? How will you react when everything is bad? How will you govern your blessing? Will you curse God and die? Will you eat this bread? Because the truth is, church, there is a war going on. And if you lose your authority, it'll be trampled underfoot. The world will say, no, <laughs> put that trampling on your feet. It's just like everything else. We hide our light. We have to exercise our Christian authority over the birds, over the fish, over the day to model it to the world. Let your light so shine. I'm going to ask the worship team to come back up. I want to close with a story that I heard. There was a gentleman, and if you've heard it, Listen to it again. There's this gentleman, and he was, um, worked at this factory. And in the factory, 
Uh, was, they, they were working on some prototypes and different things, and, and they had this thing where every day when you left work, you had to go through security to make sure that you were ta- not taking any uh, classified information or anything out of, out of the building, and everything was staying top secret. So this one gentleman, he's working night shift. He comes at the end of his shift. He's getting ready to leave work, and he has this wheelbarrow, and inside the wheelbarrow, he has this box, and inside this, this box, it's just full of sawdust. He gets ready to walk out of this building, and a security guard stops, whoa, 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 what do you think you're doing? Stop right there. And he says, I oh, know, I just, I got this box of sawdust. It's just filthy. We're, we're working in these things. We're doing some stuff with wood, and I just need to take it, and I'll take it and dispose of it. I don't believe you at all. And so he goes, and he opens up the box, and he's looking through it, and it's a box full of sawdust, and he's just super confused, and he puts the lid back on. He's like, all right, get on out of here. God gets on out of here. Second day, same thing, comes end of his work shift. He comes, he has wheelbarrows coming through. He has a box full of sawdust. The security guard stops him again. What are you doing? I just, you just like, it's just the sawdust. And I checks it like, it's just sawdust. And then second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, fifth day, the same thing again. The guy stops and says, listen, I don't know what you're doing. I, I know you just, I know you're stealing something. I, I just I have this feeling in my gut. I know you're stealing something. I don't know what it is, but I, I just feel, I, I promise, if you just tell me what you're stealing, I, I won't report you. I won't turn you in. Just, just tell me. Just tell me. I got to know. Guy looks at him and says this, I'm stealing wheelbarrows. <laughs> the devil will have you focused on the sawdust. The devil will have you focused on the sawdust. Oh, I just got, I got pastor, I got this, my marriage, my marriage is falling apart. You you just, you don't know about this man. He just keeps leaving his boxer shorts all over the place. I've told him for years to pick up his boxers. Sawdust. Sawdust. Oh, oh man, how was church today? I don't know. The air conditioning wasn't quite right. The band was a little too loud. Sawdust. You're letting the enemy rob you of your joy. You're letting that, you didn't have a bad day. You had a bad five minutes. You don't have a bad marriage. He just can't pick up his boxers. Just give the man some grace, y'all. Sawdust. Sawdust. Come on, kids. Your kids ain't bad. They just can't clean their room. And we're missing the wheelbarrows. We're missing the wheelbarrows. And you're letting the enemy just rob us of our joy and, and say, uh, 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 the, the blessings of God are all over you. Your family, and the, like, this is what he wants to increase, but if you don't, if you don't, if you, if you miss it, focus, like, ah. You know what I'm talking about, church? You've been there. Stand with me on your feet. In Revelations, it says this, and and these, and the, as we obey this word, there's this promise. There's this blessing that's going to come to us. There's this new heaven, and there's this new earth, and, and there's no more darkness. And, and the curse is just gone forever, and there's no more sun. Like, the, the sun's not even going to be there. And like, what's that going to look like? I have no clue. But, but, but God, you're going to do it. And the realization that in this, all that we have, like, it's broken right now. It's broken. He took the bread. He blessed it. Ah, he broke it. We'll get to that next week. But right now, we have this moment with this blessing in which the kingdom of God comes in. In the midst of all this chaos, in the midst of all this confusion, in the midst of the hospital room, and says, ah, but you can praise him now. Oh, but you, you can bless his name in the middle of this prison cell. You can in the midst of that stack of bills. You can in the midst of this pain and this heartache. You can, ah, because I've called you blessed. And I've separated you. And I've set you apart to be my son, my daughter, in whom I'm well pleased. Close your eyes with me. Mm. Just let those words penetrate your soul. I'm well pleased with you. I'm well pleased with you, Dave. I'm 
well pleased with you, Ron. I'm well pleased with you, Thea. I'm well pleased with you, Jody. You're my daughter. You're my son. I love you. Oh, Lord. Oh, we come to you with repentant hearts that have reduced you down to the accumulation of give me more stuff or fulfill my will. We can do all things in Christ who strengthens us. If you're in the room today and you don't know him, may today be the day of your salvation. May today be the day that you say, God, <laughs> I'm coming home. I'm not running any further. If that's you and you just, you know, you need to get right with Jesus, I'm asking you to put your hand real high in the air so I can pray a prayer with you. Is there anyone in here that you don't know him? You know, you just need to Give your life to him. Is there anybody? I don't want you to miss this moment. All right. All right. Thank you, Lord. And if you're in the room and maybe you're just not ready to make that step, Lord, I just pray that you would continue to reveal yourself to your sons, your daughters, to all of us, Lord God, that we would see your hand working in the little things and the big things in everything. To him who is able to ab do above and beyond whatever we could even imagine or ask or think. To him be all the praise and all the glory and all the honor and in the powerful, powerful, wonderful name of the resurrected Christ. Everyone said amen and amen and amen and amen and amen and amen. He is worthy, church. Come on, just for Jesus. For Jesus. God, you are worthy. God, you are holy. God. Church, if you need prayer for anything, anything at all, we have some folks over here that would love love, love to pray for you guys. If you're wondering what your next step is, if you haven't been baptized, come talk to our folks at this next step table. They would love to help you with your next step. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Grace and peace. God bless. Well, we hope this podcast has blessed you. In case you didn't know, we are in the middle of renovating a brand new facility right here in Brunswick County, North Carolina. So listen, two things. Please take a moment and pray for us. Also, if you'd like to give to the ministry, sign on to the website at mycoastalchurch.com slash giving. Hey, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Grace and peace.